Welcome to Get It Done Entrepreneurs, where we talk with founders of companies who bet on themselves in one. My name is Rich Lebrun, and I am the founder and CEO of Lebrun Advisory Group. You can find us at rlebrun.com. Our mission is to help our clients build wealth through business ownership. Stick around to the end of the show, and we'll reveal how you can be our next guest. And our special guest today is Jerome Myers, better known as Jay. Uh, Jay is a developer of people and places. He is the founder and chief inspiration officer of two ventures. Dreamcatchers is a boutique coaching firm that supports first and second generation wealth creators to self-actualize and attain transcend transcendence. And the Myers Development Group, where he helps ordinary people invest in multifamily real estate in a way that creates generational wealth. Through these ent entities, he's, he gets to live out his childhood dreams of helping people manifest the things they imagine, and he is the evidence of that dream that could be real. Since leaving corporate America after building a $20 million division, Jay has become one of the most sought-after thought leaders in the multifamily development space. His company, the Myers Development Group, built a multi-million dollar portfolio following the principles of Myers Methods. This success has led him to being featured on top podcasts such as Best Real Estate Investing Advice Ever with Joe Fairless, Apartment Investing with Michael Blank, Multifamily Investor Nation with Dan Hanford, Target Market Insights with John Kasman, and many more. Although he's often told that he makes investing look easy, the people close to him know the road wasn't without challenges. So he created Myers Method a real estate educational four-step process to owning and operating apartments. He lives in Greensboro, North Carolina. And with that said, welcome, Jerome, to the show. Rich, thanks for having me, man. Let's get something done. <laughs> How about it? How about it? We can talk real estate all day long. But Jerome, you know, people like to know, you kind of alluded to it, that you had, you know, you had the story behind you getting to where you are today. So let's start right there. Uh, what caused you to start your own company? Let's tell the story from beginning to end. Man, so I started my own company really shortly after joining corporate America. And I was like, one day we're going to go out, we're going to do this real estate thing. But I got sucked in and I think a whole lot of people do to climbing the corporate ladder. And so I looked up and it was over a decade later, hadn't really done anything except bought a single family home and then upgraded to an, another single family home on the backside of the recession. I was like, whoa, what about this real estate dream? What am I going to do? And am I actually going to do something about it? And so I'm, I'm matriculating through my career. I get to my last job on January 13th of 2015. And we've got zero dollars in revenue. It's me and one other guy. And at the end of that year, we had about 175 folks on the team, $20 million in revenue, 30% profit margins. And I'm responsible for the P&L. And I was like, what a wild ride this thing was. But it, it, we're not talking about December 31st. We're talking about December 24th. And I get a phone call at 4.55 and it goes something like this. Hey, Jerome, you guys had a great year this year. And you and I have been talking about this one item for a few weeks now. And I've made a final decision on what we're going to do. We're going to lay half your team off. Like, we're going to do what? <laughs> we're going to lay half the team. I said, that's not the right answer. We need these folks. Yeah, I hear you, but that's not what we're going to do. We're, we're going to lay half the folks off. And I went back to retort again. He said, this isn't a negotiation. I called to inform you of a decision. And I paused because I was like, I don't have a choice here. And so I, I still tried to come up with the reason why this was the wrong decision. He's like, look, man, I'm going to spend the rest of the year with my family. I'll talk to you in the new year. He hung up the phone. And so here I was realizing, and it was really starting to sink in that I was the ax man now. Okay? I had to let people know that they had to go find a new way to earn a living. And that cut deep because I went through the recession of 2009 unimpacted. I saw other people impacted for me and my family. And for a lot of my friends, we weren't impacted at all. And so this was like, there's not even a recession going on. Why would we be laying folks off? Especially with being as profitable as we were. And so didn't eat, didn't sleep, decided I didn't like the holidays because I realized now that I was just a statistic, right? I was part of something that is normal course of action. Anybody who thinks about what happens in the fourth quarter of just about every year, 
these things happen where people make these staffing adjustments. And so I said, I'll never do this again, but I'm going to go through the experience. And so we put Humpty Dumpty back together again. We make another run. Rich, we do another $20 million. We've got it with half the team. So, you know, we're double the productivity this time. And I remember standing up in front of my team a couple of days before Thanksgiving and saying, hey, guys, I don't know what's going to happen between now and the end of the year, but please don't spend all your money on Black Friday. And I just felt all my leadership credibility start to ooze out of me and onto the floor because I'm telling people I don't know if they're going to have a role. I'm telling people that I don't know after we've hit all of these targets and goals that we set out to do, whether or not we're still going to have employment for them. I, the buck didn't stop with me, Rich. And so I was like, man, I, I got to get out of the matrix. I got to go do something where it's truly my call. I'm truly the one that's making the final decision. And I don't have to carry something forward that I don't truly believe. And so that was the beginning of the end for me. And so by the end of the year, beginning of the next year, I was out. And I thought a couple of things were going to happen. One, I thought I was just going to go buy an apartment building because I had experience in college that made me tremendously interested in multifamily real estate investing. The other thing I thought was going to happen is I would be able to consult back to the company or companies that I just left. And neither one of those things worked out for me. And it was deflating, to say the least, right? You think all the people who want to get on your calendar and want to call you are going to want to do the same thing when you're not in the role. And there was nothing further from the truth. In fact, they didn't answer the phone for me once they realized that I didn't have the title anymore. And so here I am thinking, hey, you're a great person. People like you. They enjoy you. They enjoyed the thought of what could be done for them by knowing you. And so we, we wrestle with it. We flip around. We start doing fix and flip because if you have HGTV, you know that's what every real estate investor does. And we do a few of those. And I'm sitting on the stoop of one of those properties. It was a $90,000 rehab. There were... You know, I think we paid $50,000 for the house and we did everything, man. We did uh, the mechanical system, electric, and this guy pulls up and he says, uh, hey, but we're doing a house down the street. Can we check out your finishes to make sure whatever we do is up to par with whatever is going to be on the market? I was like, yeah, come on in. Because, you know, he wanted to see what I was doing. This is the first real success I had because, you know, the stuff didn't work out the way I thought it was going to work out. And so. I bring him in and he's like, oh, you took the wall out and you got this great granite and he goes upstairs. He's like, oh, look at the shower. And you, you added a bathroom. That's really nice. How you made it a suite. And we come back down the stairs and he's getting ready to walk out and he stops at the threshold. He says, hey, man, do you know anything about that building behind the Chimbo Mart? I said, the 23 unit apartment building? He's like, yeah. I was like, yeah, man, I, I tried to buy that four or five months ago, but the banks told me I need a partner. He said, yeah, we're going to make an offer on it later today. I just want to know if you've seen it. I was like, yeah, man, I saw it. Wait. You're going to make an offer on it? You're the guy I've been looking for because I went to 10 banks and they all told me the same thing. No. <laughs> and they said I didn't have the appropriate experience, even though I was an engineer, had an MBA, had all these other certifications and credentials. When they asked me about real estate investing, I didn't have any experience. They said, I need a partner. You're the guy I've been looking for because there's no way you're going to make an offer if you don't have experience. He said, yeah, what are you going to bring to the table? I said, uh, I don't know. We'll figure that out. Don't leave me out the deal. I want to buy the deal. He said, yeah, I hear that, man. But what are you going to bring to the table? I said, I don't know. But the bank said I need a partner with experience and you have experience. So this isn't a coincidence. Like we need to be partners. And he shook his head. He turned red and he said, hey, man, what are you going to bring to the table? And I didn't get it. Right. I didn't get that. I needed to be able to articulate the value that I could add to somebody. But in my mind, it was like, there's no way that this, this is a coincidence that you stopped by my house on this random day to come see what I was doing. I did a favor for you by letting you walk through the house. You absolutely can see that I can run a project. I don't need to tell you that. You just need to be my partner and let me come in on this deal with you. And of course, I had access to capital if that's what we needed. But I didn't say any of that, Rich. I just told him, hey, man, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Just don't leave me out the deal. And so this is on a Wednesday. He shakes his head, turns around, walks out through the grass, hops in the truck and drives off. I'm like, oh, boy. So 
So they're going to make the offer tomorrow. He is going to call me and let me know we got this thing under contract. No. Friday came and went nothing. The weekend, nothing. I was like, okay, Monday, they just had to get through the weekend. Absolutely nothing. So we get back to Wednesday in the next week and I'm starting to get concerned, Rich. And I, I guess most people out there, because uh, this, my ship came in, my ship right. came into my house <laughs> and walked it's out. It's about to sail away. Yeah. And so I, I, I look at the guy, I, I, I look at my phone. I'm like, man, maybe I should reach out to this guy. Maybe I should call him. Rich, I didn't get his phone number. It's like, I'm, I'm sure I can find him. What's his name? Rich, I didn't get his name. It's like, well, maybe I'll just go to the house and hang out around the house and see if he comes to the house one day. I didn't even know what house he was doing. So literally, I had no way to get back in touch with this guy. I, literally, I blew the opportunity to tell this guy how I could be an effective partner for him. Literally, I had the chance and I wasted it. And I tell that story only because I know the listeners are out there, especially if they're thinking about walking out of the role. And when you walk out of that role, you don't have the title anymore. So you can't hang your hat on that. You've got to be able to articulate the value that you can add to other people. Them bringing you in to do something, this isn't charity, right? You got to be able to add value to a partnership in order to be brought in. So, and that's one of the lessons that nobody ever told me. So I just want to make sure if they don't listen to anything else, Rich, they get that one thing from us, right? In the in the end, the next week, I get a phone call from a buddy of mine. I used to lend money to when I was in corporate doing hard money stuff. He said, hey, man, I got the opportunity to be a general contractor on that property you were talking about five, six months ago. I said, what? He said, yeah. They reached out to me, invited me. I told them that I would only be willing to do it if you are part of the deal, though. I was like, are you serious? I said, what do I got to do? He said, well, just come to this meeting tomorrow at nine. I was like, I'll be there. No question. So we ended up closing the deal. And so that's how I got into multifamily. It was 11, 12 months later before we got the first deal done. Then we went on from that um, because now I had experience since we closed the deal. The banks were willing to lend to me. Uh, we created a portfolio, multi-million dollar portfolio, started teaching other people how to do it. Um, and we started having some exits. And uh, the last exit we had, we actually helped people double the money in less than five years that they invested. So nice. that was a, a really interesting nice. part of the entrepreneurial journey for me. And then we... Right. Yeah, let uh, me ask you, Jerome, let me hit the pause button. So I just want just for the fun of it, Roll the clock backwards, knowing what you know today, knowing from that experience you had. <laughs> if you got asked that question again, what are you bringing to the table? What would you say? What would you say today? Yeah. yeah, man. So the majority of my corporate experience was in project management and data analytics. And so there are a lot of things that I can do, both front office and back office. If you're looking to execute a project, I'm your man whether it's construction or implementation of a technology. And so in this particular instance, every apartment complex has a business plan. Somebody needs to manage that business plan. I'm the person that can help you do that. Yeah, it's interesting how that's, they came out very naturally today. Well, but you are successful. So, you know, you had, you had that little, I think those aha moments, right? We all get them, you know, we've had opportunities, whether it's, buying stock or getting into a real estate deal or something that, you know, we just missed it by a fraction and, uh, but enough to miss it to make a difference in our life. But you also done some things right. And to make this ensure you're successful today. What are, what are some of the good decisions you made uh, when you look back that really kind of uh, catapulted to what you catapulted to where you are today? Yeah. I think the biggest thing that I've learned post exit of corporate America is education is extremely valuable. And I'm not talking about the traditional university education, but there are a lot of people out there who offer specific knowledge to accomplish a certain task. And I think so many of us feel like, oh, well, I can just learn that on YouTube or I can learn that through a book. But nothing's been more valuable for me than being in communities with people who are doing the same thing I'm doing or working one-on-one -on -one with somebody who has done what I've done or want to do. And those things have been the greatest accelerators for me since I left corporate. And I didn't value education when I was in corporate. 
I went to college or university on scholarships. So I didn't have to pay for that. And then when I got MBA, my MBA at night, my company paid for that. So the thought of taking my credit card out and swiping it to pay for somebody to teach me something didn't resonate. And it wasn't until I went and did the first thing and I was like, this saved me potentially a decade mm. of trying to figure it out on my own. And I did a bunch of self-education on the real estate stuff in the beginning. I mean, 40 hours of podcasts a week. Like I was just consuming, consuming, consuming. And I could have saved all of that time, eliminated so many mistakes if I would have made the investment and having somebody looking over my shoulder. I think about it like driver's ed now, right? Where you got somebody over there in the passenger seat, coaching and guiding you through it, looking over your shoulder, making sure you don't make any fatal errors that can end the game but you're in the driver's seat and so so at least you're, you're experiencing the drive and yeah the, yeah 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 my dad always told me he said rich you want to learn about real estate go buy yourself a hundred thousand dollar condo and just learn okay and then after that you just add more zeros behind it <laughs> and, I, and i thought that was the greatest experience because you know, I, I learned on my first one i learned i learned the good the bad the different and made some good decisions made some bad but at the end of the day i learned and the risk was minimal compared to today. So uh, that's fascinating. Jerome, let's take a little bit of a commercial break, okay? Because every a lot, of, a lot of people I talk to, you know, I help people buy businesses, and but everybody goes, they they watch all these uh, flip, fix and flip shows. They all want to be in the real estate world. It sounds sexy. They want to do it, okay? And this is what you do. So give us a, a this is a commercial for you. So you take it away. Talk about your company who your customers are, services you offer, and anything you want to promote. Yeah, um, that, this is a really interesting way to do it. And so what I would say is our company helps people who are first or second generation wealth creators get into the multifamily space. And that is done through education on our four-step process for buying apartment buildings and operating them. And so we find fun, fix and flip those apartment buildings. We have a 13 week course where we take you step by step through the process that we use in order to build our portfolio and how we actively manage it and are delivering returns for our partners. We are the only company that I know of that focuses on buying these properties through joint ventures versus syndication. A lot of people go out and raise money from a whole lot of people and then go buy a building. We didn't get excited about that, especially not early in the journey, because so many things can go wrong. You want to do that with a group of people who you already have a relationship with versus a stranger or somebody you met on LinkedIn who decided to trust you with their money, even though you didn't know what you were doing, per se. And so we help people figure out how to do that. We give them everything from figuring out how to find the lead to what they need to be looking for in their contracts to what closing looks like to how to manage their property manager and then what they need to be looking for in the exit. And I, I don't know of a program that is as comprehensive as the one that we have. Um, and then for the people who want to go to the next level, which is not just this prosperity focus, we have a holistic coaching program that touches on things that will reduce stress, improve health, help them create wealth with the multifamily is the backbone of it. The multifamily investing is the backbone of it and then allow them to leave a lasting legacy. And so if they're curious about what we do and how we do it, they can go to I took the red pill.co or slash book and they can get a free electronic ebook from us on how we do this and why it's worked for us and so many others. Is there a financial criteria for for your customers to be able to participate in your program? We don't have a financial criteria because some of this stuff can be done with sweat, right? So if you're the person who can go find the deal, you can get carried interest or interest from your sweat and other people can bring the capital. And so we feel like, you know, money's not the, in fact, we think money's probably the least valuable thing. We do, we do not tell people that you should try to buy things with no money down because I just think that is an advanced investing technique. It's not for the beginner who doesn't have money. It's for the person who has a lot of money and has a ton of experience because usually those properties or those deals 
have some hair on them and you have to be able to navigate your way through them because if the property was in operating optimally, the person probably wouldn't be selling it because they would be getting money from it each month. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. There's a lot of those programs of how to buy money, real estate with more money down. And there's two sides of that coin. Either I think it happens a lot more when the, and when you have more money behind the deal and you're a larger investor. On the other side, I think is a little bit uh, shady. How's that? That's my opinion. <laughs> so, well, you know, you said I said it, not me, Rich. I, I, I can say <laughs> it. it's my podcast. I can say it. <laughs> so, um, anyhow, don't take the red pill. Is that is that what you said? I took the red pill. I took, all right, tell me what's this red pill thing. Yeah, so the 1999 documentary, The Matrix, there is a scene where the main character, Neo, gets presented with the opportunity to take a red pill or a blue pill. And the red pill is tied to the truth. It's being taken out of the system, taken out of the collusion that many of us get into where we believe that we're just supposed to be, for lack of a better word, slaves. And we just go do the same thing for 40 years. I mean, I think everybody's been sold the game, right? Get good grades, get into a good school, get a good job, get married, have 2.5 kids, get the white picket fence, two luxury cars and the dog, work for 40 years, hope to retire and live for 10 years after that. And if you did that, you had a great life. Well, I think time and location freedom are things that are really valuable. And I don't think most people really understand that the more valuable they are to the business, the less valuable they actually are. And so we want to help people find and live out their truth and have the freedom and really be able to enjoy the life of their wildest dreams. And so we feel like you can only do that in truth. Everything else is kind of... Uh, I call it depressing, but so there you go. I like that word. There you go. You know, uh, you know, over a hundred years ago, ninety-five percent of the country was an entrepreneur. They're farmers, and you know, with the industrial age, I think ninety-five percent of people now work for corporate America. So we have that spirit within us. It just needs to be dusted off. Have people encourage us, like yourself, uh, and go out there and start living that dream again. And I, I'm, I'm one hundred percent with you. If I could teach my kids everything all over again, I would just teach them all to be entrepreneurs. Uh, whether they want to do it or not in the end, at least they know what it looks like. Um, so I take the red pill. I have to go watch that show again, catch that scene. That's great. All right, let's go uh, forward. And uh, especially in real estate, you're, that industry is vulnerable to the market. Uh, we've had a lot of crazy things in 2022. We're not out of the woods yet. We had uh, one of the hottest real estate markets in my career I've ever seen. Uh, and then now we're hit, heading towards, you know, maybe slowing it down. Their interest rates are going up. Uh, if you're in the construction side of the real estate business, the supply chain was a, something to be dealt with. So how did you navigate 22? How do you see 2023? How do you see, is this a time to invest, to move forward, to, you know, the, you know maybe uh, slow things down, save your money? How are you seeing the future the best you can uh, and for your company? But also then the second part of the question is how do you do it personally? You know, you got to get up and lead the charge, right? Yeah. You're the leader, you're the founder, everybody's kind of looking for you. Um, what kind of things do you do to keep yourself on track to get up on Monday morning and, and set the pace for everybody else? Yeah, I'll answer the second question first. And so I've probably got an overly complicated morning routine, but it works for me. And I think a lot of people are asking a lot of me. And so maybe that investment in myself is pretty, has to be intense in order for me to deliver at the level I need to deliver. And so we wake up in the four o'clock hour daily. We do meditation. Then there's some cardio or some type of other type of physical activity for approximately an hour. Then we come back, we read, then we do some journaling and affirmations along with that. And then there's some self-education that happens and it can be on a number of different topics, but the whole point is to get something in our mind to get us churning and eating. And we do that before we do anything else. And on a, on a typical day, we don't talk to people on the outside of the office before nine o'clock. That's usually our goal. And so that quiet time, those four or five hours in the morning gives us space to really understand what's important, set priorities, make decisions. 
and do the deep work that I think is necessary in order for us to continue to ascend and reach that level of transcendence that you spoke about in the bio. As far as the company and what real estate looks like going forward, the think the most important thing that anybody who's buying an asset of any type needs to pay attention to is the cost basis. And so if you go in and you buy real estate that is really worth 70 or 80, thousand dollars per unit and you buy it for a hundred you're going to be in trouble at some point if you go buy something with the really low cap rate you're going to be in trouble at some point because of where interest rates are and so the focus on the underlying asset and really having your best guess and you know i i encourage people to be overly conservative here because if they're not they could get caught in a re really tough situation the focus on the cost basis is where I think the money will be made or lost for the majority of people. And, you know, there's a lot of folks talking about inflation and, well, you, you know, if you, inflation's at 9% and your interest rate is 6%, then you got to compound in 3% on that money that's invested. I hear you, but I tell people, if you don't see something worth buying, don't buy anything, stay in the cash. Because the deal that you don't do oftentimes is the best deal that you've ever done. Right? Mm -hmm. People get caught in these things and then they're writing checks to get out. And it's no fun to write a check to get out of a deal. It's no fun to write a check to pay mortgages or bills for a deal that isn't going well. I've done all of these. Things. And so it's not like I sit here from on high saying that you shouldn't do this. I'm, I'm telling you from learned experience that you have to be careful because your real estate will either be an alligator or a goose. Hmm. You feed a goose, it lays eggs. Golden eggs, hopefully. You feed an alligator, well, you know what comes out the other end of that. <laughs> yes, but you see, I mean, okay, so you're you're in an industry, uh, do you, uh, it's just harder to find, but they're there. You just got to, they you are just got to, you just got to be they more are patient. harder to find. They are harder to find. Uh, you have to spend more time with owners. You need to be looking for specific situations. Um, they're going to probably be distressed a little bit. You're looking for people who are looking for an out. And so, you know, our business model, I'll give it to folks. And we look for people who are older, right? They've owned properties for 10 or 15 years. Usually they don't have a mortgage. And their net worth is tied up in the property. Like when we know that the majority of the net worth is tied up in the property, then we look at the property and we see what the rents are. We know what it takes to run one of those properties. Mm -hmm. We know pretty quickly whether or not they have cash flow, right? And if they don't have cash flow, then they have to kill the goose in order to get the cash flow. So they would sell the property. And that is our business model. We're going to pay you for the goose because you want your net worth liquefied. And mm -hmm. we're going to put the cash in because we believe that we can make the goose lay eggs. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. You work all throughout the country. Anybody wants to use your services, they could uh, do it in any state in the United States. Yeah. So our multifamily investing process, the, the Myers method, the four-step process works anywhere in the world. It's the exact same process everywhere you go. And the sequence matters. A lot of people think that you can just do things kind of haphazardly. And we've just learned that it's inefficient. And in the end, you end up doing the same steps in the same sequence every single time. Yeah. yeah you go out there, uh, you look at 100, uh, 100 of them to get a good one. But a lot of people just don't want to get off get off their couch and go look at the 100. <laughs> well, and, and that's okay because it makes it better for us, right? At the end of the day, <laughs> you get rewarded for the work that you're willing to do that other people want. That's right. I never thought about that. Let's encourage them to sit on the couch. We'll go out there and get yeah. the deals. <laughs> yeah. Go right ahead, guys. It's fine. Go right ahead. All right. Once again, Jerome, how can they get a hold of you? Should they want to learn more about your program? And and uh, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, I think we'll we'll get in touch with them. So go to I took the red pill dot co forward slash book, grab your free book, get to learn more about us and how it worked for us. And then from there, we'll reach out and just see if there's anything else we can do to help them on their journey. Fantastic. 
Jerome, uh, thanks for uh, being on the show. I know you're a busy guy, so thanks for taking time out of your day to share your wisdom with those uh, who are listening. And I, I think real estate is always a great platform. It's a fun, it is a fun business and it has a lot, of, a lot of components to it. So, uh, but I, I agree 100%. Take it slow, get some, somebody in the driver's seat next to you, like, the, like your analogy did. And Jerome sounds like the perfect person to do that. So thanks for being on the show today. Thanks for having me, Rich. This was awesome. Guys, go out there and get it done. <laughs> <laughs> there, there you go. Rich LeBron here. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast, Get It Done Entrepreneurs. If you are a successful business owner who would like to be on this program, please visit us at rlebrun.com forward slash podcast and fill out the form and we will reach out to you. If you got something out of this interview, would you share this episode on social media? Just do a quick screenshot with your phone and text it to a friend or post it on the socials. If you know someone that would be a great guest, tag them on social media to let them know about the show and include the hashtag Get It Done Entrepreneurs. I love seeing your posts and guest suggestions. We are regularly putting out new episodes and content. To make sure you don't miss any episodes, go ahead and subscribe. Your thumbs up ratings and reviews go a long way to help promote the show and mean a lot to me and my team. Want to know more? Go to our website, rlebrun.com, or follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. Thanks for listening. We will see you next time.